Okay, now we're going to look at the last panel for uh, input monitoring. Um, and this is probably the most interesting one. So this is the actual inputs, the hardware inputs on the Aurora Inn. And this panel is a little bit different in that in addition to the routing stuff we've already looked at, uh, this has some pretty useful information um, as well. So for instance, right now we can see that we're getting input meter activity on analog inputs 3 and 4 as well as AES inputs 3 and 4. So this is useful just to see if um, we're getting signal into the hardware itself irrespective of what we're doing with recording it or routing it or etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, in addition to the routing stuff we've seen before it gets a little bit more complex here on the input side. So um, as I said you can see input meter activity here on the digital input side we can also see a lock status for our digital input. So that lets us know that we have a valid device connected with the right cables, it's turned on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can see nine through 16, nothing's connected, so that shows unlocked, so that's useful as well. Um, it's important with the routing features here that we understand the difference between software monitoring and hardware monitoring. Software monitoring is what you do in your DAW, and uh, there is always going to be some latency associated with that. It's going to be relative to the sample rate and the buffer size, but usually at the beginning of a project that's fine, especially here this is a, a Thunderbolt system, we can get really low latency, so that works fine for recording. But sometimes you have a project that has a lot of stuff going on, there's plugins and you're overdubbing into it and you need the buffer size to be a little higher. So this is an alternative way of monitoring that has virtually no discernible latency. So we're going to do things similarly to what we did before with SD play and play. You choose your output and then you just simply unmute the uh, the input source that you want going to that output. There's a couple extra controls here. You still have level um, but you also have a pan control. So let's say that we just have a mono source coming in the left. We want it panned in the center. You can do that as well. Keep in mind with all of this stuff that the panning, the levels, this has no impact on the signal being recorded in your DAW. This is just merely the level and the position of the signal that we're monitoring through this output down here, okay? So some people think that if you want to attenuate your input, you do it here. That's, that actually has no effect whatsoever. Um, so similar, we can take the AES input. Let's say we want that going to output three and four. You just unmute it and kaboom, there it is. So, so it works very similar to what we already saw. Like with the outputs, you can name the inputs, so that also is very useful for studio um, uh, organization. Um, now, the preamp inputs are a little bit different um, because that actually can affect the signal source going down to the DAW to be recorded. So preamp, you have your input level control, what my mic is going into right now. Um, but you can also make some of the other settings available for the preamp input. So you can toggle between line and high Z. You can apply a pad, phantom power, the phase switch, and the high pass filter, and so forth, too. But in addition to that, you know, like right now, I am listening through headphones, and I have the mic input routing to it. So you can see that I have the uh, mic input going there. So we can do that with any other sources as well. So that's basically the nutshell of the input section. It's where we do hardware input monitoring, where we get some useful information in addition to that routing features and now let's move on to the other controls available to us.